Cause right, right. Hmm. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm I'm having one of those private moments in public, which is not a good idea. Um. So uh, yeah, I'm looking. There it is. There's my timer. Um. Are we ready? Am I ready? We are ready if you're ready. It's watch me work. I hope everybody had a good, uh, however long it was that we were away, um, getting other work done. It's watch me work. I'm SLP, uh, the writer in residence at the Public Theater. We've been doing watch me work for 11 years. And I think in this COVID time, when we were, we're kind of going every day for weeks and then we've done as many sessions as we did every week. I don't know how to say that. Anyway, we've been doing this a lot lately and it's been fun. I've been having a wonderful time. So what we do is we, first we thank the public theater and thank Howl Around because they have been supporting us and making this beautiful thing happen. So giving love to the public theater and to Howl Around. And we work for 20 minutes together and then I answer your questions about your creative process and your work. So it's basically all about you. That's what we're here for. And if you have a question, Audrey will tell you how to answer it. Thanks, SLP. Um, so if you have a question, you're inside of the Zoom, all you need to do is click on the participant tab, um, likely at the bottom of your screen, if you're on a laptop or the top of your iPad or a tablet, there's a raise your hand button in the participant tab that you click on, it'll raise your little blue hand and I'll call on you um, if we've got time. Uh, if you are watching on HowlRound.tv, you can ask us a question by tweeting at us at, at WatchMeWorkSLP with the hashtag HowlRound, which is H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. <laughs> or you can tweet us at Public Theater NY, or you can write to the Public Theater's Instagram. And those are all the ways. Those are all the ways. And um, yeah, we are, we are holding space and keeping faith and... Uh, having some fun. So here we go for 20 minutes. You can't see, it's weird, there's sun coming in. What's going on? It's like this light. <laughs> there it is, anyway. Thank you.
look like a cookie. <laughs> you do look like a cookie. One of those cookies. Those are my favorite kind of cookies. I love those. <laughs> oh, stop. They're called, there's a name for those cookies. Yummy. Yes. I. Are you ready? Yes, ma'am. Let's do it. All right, Melania. Oh, she's gone. Ah. Well, come, come back if you have a, oh, she's back. All right, don't worry. Here you go. Melania, are you still? Hi. I'm here. I pressed the wrong button. Hello, Susan. Hello. How are you? There are so many buttons in this thing. So, hey, first of all, I miss you. Oh, likewise. Yes, I miss you a lot. So I am so happy to be here. And I would like to share that, you know, that the last time we talked, I was saying, I was thinking about sharing what I am doing with people from Argentina. And I was in this mentality of all or nothing. I spent mm -hmm. in the world and, and you told me about, in, you know, going slower and talking. And I am doing that. I am opening myself and sharing my, my journey with that I trust. Uh -huh. Very, very nice what is happening. And um, there was something, yes, something that it happened to me that it was a surprise. During this quarantine, I was in, I am in contact with a, with a singer and a puppeteer from Argentina. Uh -huh. In person, but we are with social media, chatting and talking, and I never told her that I write. Never. Never. But there was a puppet that she has and she's looking for a name for the puppet. So I gave names and ideas, but because I love to do that. Uh -huh. So I gave a idea and she replied to me, Melania, you should write scripts. Your ideas are so fun. And I said, exactly, <laughs> yes. So I said to her, yes. Well, I love to do that. That's what I do. I, I <laughs> and before coming to the state, and I explained to her in a very short version my, my situation. And she said, okay, when you have time, if you want to share some ideas, I am interested. And this is the person that I really respect and admire. But, okay, thank you. And what? I God, you, that was God that sent you, Susan. Because of you. you. It's because of you. I mean, thank you. It's because of you. Yes. It's because of all the hard work you're doing and all the joy you're bringing to it. Oh, thank Pat you. Pat yourself on the back because of you. Yes. That means a lot to me. I'm so happy for you. I am very happy also. And today, another thing that happened that we talked about together here in Watch Me Work was that you remember that in my church, they have this summer camp and they asked me for intros and outros right some videos and i wrote them and today with my three girls we were watching the, the summer camp virtual summer camp and they look at me because they knew what i was doing and they said mommy those people are saying things that you wrote ah. <laughs> yes. Yes. and in that moment the blessing was like everything oh. came together my daughters my writing a moment of such joy and I, I was in the middle of that, thanking God and saying, thank God for Susan Laurie Parks and mm -hmm. all the Watch Me Work. Because wow. without this group, without you, giving me this wisdom, words of wisdom and tenderness and such joy, I, I, you know, it was impossible for me alone. And this community and you are a blessing. So I want to. Well, so are you. Thank you. We're going to take that. Thank you so much. And like I say, every day, time, it's a circle. You know what I mean? We give to each other and we get stuff, you know? Even if you never, some people watch it and they never say anything. You know what I mean? You don't have to be vocal to be contributing. But always, Milani, you've been so uh, generous with, with what you're working on and all that. And it's coming back to you. And that's, that's how it works. And I'm so glad to hear that. And I am so glad that so thank you. <laughs> Yay. I know it's magic. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Really. Okay. Right on. Right on. Yay. All right. Um, up next we've got Kendall. Hey Kendall. Hi, how are you? Happy Monday. Happy Monday. 
Um, okay, hang on. So this is, it's a question that makes sense in my head. I've been working on a series and a writing mentor I have has been telling me to gain a better sense of intent and focus with what I want to write that I need to just knock it ahead of myself and just literally start outlining the first scene. And there's my problem. I'm not good at outlining because I'll write two sentences of an outline, but then I'll start writing the whole script and I'll lose my mind. And I know if I'm, if I'm right, you, you're a fan of outlining. Mm -hmm. That's what I've heard. That's great. <laughs> um, so how do you, do you have the problem where maybe you're writing something new and you start to outline and then you get way ahead of yourself? Or if you don't get ahead of yourself, how do you keep not getting ahead of yourself? Please help me. I'm dying over here. <laughs> and we've and thank it's a great question, Kendall. And we've thank all you. been there before. And some of you might have heard some ideas I'm gonna say, but I'm gonna repeat them. Have you tried, Kendall? Have you tried outlining on three by five index cards? No. And I know and that I know you love index cards. I have a thing for office supplies. Yeah. Ugh. Index card. So Kendall, I mean, the great thing about it, I'm, I'm guessing that for so far you've been outlining on uh, by on the computer? On the computer or I'll use, I'll, I'll try to use like a notebook to Good. try to get, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm like old fashioned. I like to do notebooks and then transfer what I think is juicy enough to a computer. Great, great. great. So mm -hmm. you're gonna, um, you're gonna use an index card and make sure okay. It's a three by five index card. So you don't want an index card, you know, one of those big honkers, you know what I'm saying? Sure, okay. Those small little juniors. Okay. Right? Um, I would suggest white with no lines. Okay. Right? Just because it's kind of plain, you know, you're not gonna get distracted. Uh, it's pretty, pretty plain, okay? Perfect. It's gonna hopefully calm you down. Lack of lines won't, won't feel like a straight jacket. So all these things are like, you know, we just want to get you into like, like you're looking into my soul right now, just telling me what's there. Yeah, that's my, that's my joyous job. Oh my God. Okay. Your soul is my soul, Kendall. You're going to make me cry. I think we are the world. Oh, okay. so, so. oh, bless you. Bless you. Does that make sense? So you're going to get yourself some three by five index cards. Okay. You're going to, uh, with no lines, if you can, you're going to, um, you, I'm glad you like handwriting. Mm -hmm. And you're going to just do scene by scene on the index card. And the great thing is, is that on an index card, you can't go on and on and on and on and on, right? You can just, yeah. just the meat of the scene. Like this is a scene where such and such and this and that happens. And it, then the next scene I see in my mind, cause it's a screen, it's a teleplay, right? It's a series, <laughs> right? The next thing I see, I see is this and this and this. And you just are writing these kind of snapshots down on the scenes, on, on, the, on the index cards, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. so that will help you, um, uh, that will help you not rein in or control your creative urge to write a lot. That'll help you, let's think of it as you're keeping the lid on the pot. Because you want to generate a really good boil, right? So we're not saying control yourself or hold back or anything like that. I'm just saying, or it's like, uh, let's just say dating. It's more fun than cooking. Yeah. So you go on a first date with somebody, you know, you meet them online. Or that's how I met my husband, so it's cool. You meet them online, you don't, I mean, you could give them everything you got on the first date, tell them all your stories and give them your thang thang and all that. Yeah. But you know, it's much better if you kind of wait, right? You're right. Draw it out. You're right. Little bit at a time. Okay. okay, so you got your index cards. You're gonna write one scene on an index card. Okay. 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 And 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 resist the urge to write. You know, go on and on. Ten index cards later, you're on to scene two. You know, just mm. a snapshot. Just a snapshot, Kindle. Perfect. It's gonna help you become a better writer. Mm. Okay. All right. Thank okay. you so much. And keep coming back to this, you know, you know, oh, coming back. I will. It's fun. Oh, yeah. This is so good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
Thanks, Kendall. Um, all right, up next we've got Charles. Oh, Go for it, Charles. Hey. Charles. Hey guys. Hi, welcome back. Hey, Susan. Yes, thank you. How's it going? Good, good. I've been coming to class without my video because I was taking my tanning outside uh, and I didn't want you guys to see me tanning. So you that's were why. Are you, were you really tan? Are you serious? You were tanning? Yeah. <laughs> I was riding outside, like enjoying the sun in California. And, but you know, I didn't want you guys to see me without my outfit from the top. So I was like, let's oh, keep oh, it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We would have been like, oh my goodness. Are you so, surprised about like the war or something? Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, actually, I ha today I'm going to ask a different question, but I'm going to go back to that project because uh, oh, oh. so my friend, um, he offered me, he's an African-American and he offered me um, he uh, the story of Anansi, the folklore story from Anansi. Mm -hmm. And uh, my question is, uh, do you think I, we, what's your, what's your uh, point on, on uh, characters, folklore characters? Do we need the right for them? Do we need to take the rights or not? Oh. Uh, it's tricky. Anansi the spider, right? Is that? Exactly. Yeah, I my feeling is that with respect and grace, folklore characters are, you know, like, I, I, I'm not a lawyer, but I my guess would be folklore characters in the public domain. OK. And they're Thanks. old tales. And so you, you handle them with respect and grace. It's like. It's like a beautiful thing that you're, you know, great, 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 yeah, great he's, grandmother. Yeah, you know? he's dealing with the old culture because he's African-American. Like, I'm like, dude, I will help with the, you know, writing and about you take care oh, of all okay. this. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. I, no, I think, I think it's, I think it's public domain. That's what I think. But I think a lawyer would have a. Thank you so much. A professional opinion. Thank you, Susan. And I'll get you another uh, question this week. So okay. be ready for me. Happy tanning. Happy tanning. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Right? <laughs> That's right. Yes. Very important. It's so important. Um, <laughs> next, we've got Nick. Hey, Nick. Hi. Wow, this is happening. Uh, long time watcher, first time participating. Right uh, on. Yeah, so I have. I do a lot of hip hop theater work and I have a play I've been working on for years. I've gotten to do like a nice little run of it. I've gotten to do an updated draft. I feel really good about where it's at. But of course, the one problem I have is I cannot get a good synopsis down, like that good two sentence, three sentence kind of thing that gets the gist of the play out there. And I'm a little lost on that. Okay, so how do so how do we write? How do you write a good synopsis? Hmm. Okay, so right. So I mean, I'm, I'm sure you're an improv guy. I'm sure you've tried a hundred different ways to do it. Oh yeah. You're, you're willing to try shit, right? You've actually gotten in an elevator. Do you have an elevator in your building? I'm guessing you're in New York. Where are you, man? Uh, I'm in Brooklyn. Um, we only have stairs. It's like a three-story apartment. Great. What floor are you on? Third. Great. Can you walk up the stairs? Are you I allowed? Can. Great. I mean, you have you have the ability. Great. So go downstairs. <sighs> tell yourself the story. It's not an elevator pitch because you don't have no elevator, and I don't want you to go to an elevator with COVID and risk your life. Okay. But why don't you try walking up the stairs? You know. So well, try with a friend. If you and also you get your cardio, which is doubly good, right? Oh, walk yeah. up the stairs with a friend or by yourself and talk to yourself out loud. Okay, so this is what my play is about. There's this guy, there's this woman, there's this jackalope, and they're walking up and 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 in the end of it, right? Try it, try it. Get your body, do you, have you involved your body in the in the writing of this synopsis? Uh, no, not yet, but there you go. Yeah, Try it. Mm, what we do, what we do is, it, I mean, it's not just some bullshit thing, although it might be. But what, what I'm trying, to, what I'm encouraging you to do, is engage another part of your brain. So, in walking up the stairs, you're actually doing right. You're you're telling your brain, oh, rip, rip, right, rip, that, but but you're make, make, helping your brain fire across itself, right? You're also 
actually using your legs, not just sitting at your desk going, hmm, right? You're actually probably working up a little bit of a sweat or getting your heart rate going and your brain might start firing on different cylinders and get you out of the rut and get you into a groove. You see what I mean? So it's an actual thing. It's like you, you, you've heard, you know, famous writers, they, they go for walks and get ideas and all that. But right now we're gonna have you walk up the stairs and talk out loud, telling your synopsis. You want three sentences, right? Yeah. This is it, the dad is it, guy. He the demi came again again. And in the end, he got again and had again again. And before you know the words, you're an improv guy, you can just do gobbledygook. Like when Paul McCartney wrote yesterday, he was saying scrambled eggs. You know that. Like when children learn to talk, they just go, please, God, I'm going to get the So you're just going to go gobbledygook. What you want is, and then he can, and in the end, that's your synopsis. You're going to find the right words. Awesome. Okay? It's fun. And if it doesn't work, you at least get your steps in. Yeah, that's, thank you. That's awesome. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> no, I do shit like that all the time, man. I, I have a, I play the, I, I play, I play the violin, right? So my violin teacher says, when you're worried about getting the right notes, instead of concentrating on the fingering hand, concentrate on the bowing hand, right? And the right notes are just there. Right? So it's, it's just trying to activate different parts of your brain. So we'll see and report back to us. We want to see if that works. Awesome. Thank you, Nick. All right. Up next, we've got Larry. Hey, Larry. Larry. Larry with the Aurora Borealis. Hello. Yes. Hello, um, hi. How's the directing going? Uh, um, slow, <laughs> distant. Um, <laughs> Uh, thank you. I uh, am trucking along. So uh, things are good. I have a character who, you know, those people who you just can't argue with, they're, they use words and they're so eloquent, you just cannot keep up. And when I want to work with a character like that, but of course, that means that that person has to use words better than me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to write a character who's kind of a better writer than I am. Mm -hmm. And um, I, uh, particularly because you're trying to make all of your characters speak in an interesting way, to then take, to, to already struggle for that and then have a character who's supposed to sort of stand mm -hmm. above that, you know? Uh, so I'm finding myself... Um, uh, a, a little stuck on like how to get myself to be a better writer. There's a there's that uh, there's a line in this Mac Wellman play where he talks about how Shakespeare is used as a cudgel to beat down our contemporaries, and so I just uh, I'm thinking a lot about um, you know how do you how do you transcend the writer you are to write better than you know how to write. And I'm not like blocked, like I'm writing, but it's just not elevated enough. And I'm wondering how uh -huh. if you ever have had that experience of needing to like kick it up. Right, right, right. Um, that's interesting. Let's see. One of the answers is I, I pretty much probably never write better than I can on any given day. You know what I'm saying? And I, yeah. and, and that's okay. Yeah. Now, are there are if you have a character who is say more. Uh, eloquent than you are, right? It sounds like this yeah. character is more, uh, maybe cooler than you, maybe, you know, yeah. different, in, in any way different from you, right? You've yeah. got to write for them and, and it might not be directly from your own personal day-to-day -day experience. It might be from another place. You have to access that other place. Um, it's funny, I, and I love Mac Wellman, the person, and I love Mac Wellman, it's work also. He's an awesome guy and I've known him for a long time. I love that line of his. Um, that is one way of using Shakespeare. Another way of using Shakespeare is as a great inspirer. So a hammer can be hit over the head, something to hit yourself over the head with. And with a hammer, you can also make a house. Your choice. <laughs> Your choice, Larry. You know what I'm saying? All, yeah. all, we're, every day we have a choice. Right? And so you can use your wonderful idea for this awesome character as a vehicle 
to write in a certain way that perhaps you don't ordinarily write, right? Yeah. yeah. So you can have fun with it. I mean, have him say words that you don't even know what the meaning is. He, you don't have to write better. He just has to talk more eloquently, which means maybe he has dictionary talk. Well, it's funny, you just you you just reminded me of what you said to the the person who asked the last question. I'm sorry, I forgot his name. You um the character could essentially speak gibberish because all that really needs to happen is, is that other character needs to feel that he's smarter. There you go. So you're sort of right that it sort of doesn't matter what he says, it's about the effect he has on the other. There you go. No, so you're right, Larry, because you just said that. <laughs> you just uh, you just untangled it. There you go, yeah. man. Now you're right. There you go. Yeah. Now you're right. You could just be Charlie Brown, womp, 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 womp. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A $10 word, $40 word, back to the womp, 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 womp. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's great. Yeah. That's great. That sounds like fun. Cool. Done. No problem. No problem. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hold on, everyone. Thanks, Larry. <laughs> Um, all right. Um, up next, we've got Simone. Oh, okay. Oh, hi. Hey, Simone. Uh oh, she's muted. Are you Are yeah. you there now? Yeah, there I'm is. here. I'm here. Sorry. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Thank you very much for all this and great questions today too. Wow. Well, every day it's inspiring. Anyway, so my question to you is: um, I'm collaborating with a friend of mine. Um, who has um, just finished the first draft of her play. And she read it to me uh, a few days ago. And so now she wants to take it and she wants to read it to some trusted readers. So I was just wondering what sort of questions would she present to her trusted readers for feedback? Like rather than just read it to people and you know they're gonna come all from all over the place. What sort of questions or how does she create the questions that she wants to get some answers towards the response of her play. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. More so than like, did you like it? Right. Yes. Right. Yes. Well, I mean, like, it, it might depend on, good question, Simone. It, it might depend on what she's concerned with. Like, um, if, she con if she's concerned with th the story being intelligible, like, did you understand the story? You know? Yeah, it was a great story. Great. It was really great, yeah. And did you, and did, the, did you understand what the characters wanted and the characters' motivations? You know? Yes. Did any yes. Point, did anything bump you? You're like, speed bump, hook them up, you know, all of a sudden, right? Something, did anything kind of, I don't get that. Any, anything on character, plot, setting, language, dialogue, anything? Well, for me, I felt that there were some scenes where there was too many characters that were just sort of like filling space up. Um, okay. That was one thing. Okay. And okay. so there was that, you know, they were unnecessary in the telling of the story. Um, and then I felt that there were some scenes that she was in a relationship, like her, the character's development that she was really afraid to go too deep into it. So I could feel her holding back in the writing. So a question for her or, you know, might be, um, is there a way that you could go further with this character's relationship? And is there a way that you could make all the characters in this scene really meaningful to the story? You know what I mean? You see what I'm saying? So it, it becomes a question that she can answer. Um, you, you see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? It does, it does. I, I guess um, my question was more like, these are things I can go to her about, but if she's going to read it to other people, what yeah. is she, yeah, what is she looking for from them? Like, right, so we go back to what I was saying initially. Yeah. So it's what I said initially. She, the writer, would ask her audience, is there anything that, about the story they don't understand? 
Oh, okay. Is there any, you see what I mean? Those are all quick. Is there anything that bumps you that when you read it, you didn't get? Do you understand my character's motivations? Do you understand what's happening in each scene? Is there any scene that I could do without? Is there any scene that is missing in the character development? You know, things like that. Just, just basic, just to generate a conversation, those kinds of things. Okay. You know. Okay, that's great. That makes sense. Okay. Okay. Yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Simone. Thank you. Thanks, Simone. Um, all right, we actually don't have any questions at the moment. We've got about 10 minutes left. Oh, I lied. I lied so hard. I'm so okay, sorry. Uh, I can. I got the sun coming. <laughs> okay. Marta, you're up next. Are you there? Hi. Um, great to see everyone. Um, so my question is, and I hope this makes sense. I don't even know if it does, but like, um, what we... How do you let go of ideas that you've had, but that eventually someone else executes? Because I, like a few months ago, I was a little scarred by an experience where like this idea I had like a few years ago and kind of forgot, well, started working on, but then, you know, put aside, like literally, like somebody else did exactly that to the point that I do believe almost in like ideas having their own, you know, consciousness or something. And it was like, what are you doing? I'm going to go to somebody who's more like on the case. Wow. And like, I think that's fine because like, I think I'm sure like so many other people, like I have more ideas than time to, you know, like ideas. Yeah. And I tried to do what you said of, um, like a notebook where I write them down or, you know, um, different places where I write them and go back to the thing I'm trying to finish mm -hmm. and all that. But I'm trying to let go because like, I don't think I need to do all of them, but um, yeah, but like, I'm scared all the time about, yeah, things that I, that I'm like waiting to do next year or whatever. Um, yeah, that, 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 that will happen again. And I don't want to, Think like that because like it doesn't feel generous do you, you know what i mean but yeah i, mean, I yeah. know I, I feel i think i think it's 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 painful to have an idea and then to kind of read online or whatever that somebody else has kind of been you know written it already been there done that this i'm guessing that this was not a person you know no okay no. Great. So we're not in, in the lawsuit. <laughs> no. Not. And, and okay. a lot of, yeah, a lot of these are things that like, it's not a coincidence. It was something like there are things that other people might come up with. Like they're not about something that happened to me sure. or super personal. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Like, oh, I okay. could do that. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so while it is painful, and you could use it as an opportunity to kick yourself, you know, down, right? Mm -hmm. You dummy, you didn't get to it fast enough. See what happens when you don't do it. You, you know, but up, but up, but you know, we we know that record. We run that in our head. Um, and you could also use it as, a, uh oh, you better quick. You gotta do everything immediately, or someone's gonna st take, you know, write it before you do again. We can do that again. We can use. Like Larry, Shakespeare is a cudgel to beat ourselves with. We can use what happens in, wor in the world. This person did not steal from you, but we could still use it as a way to make ourselves feel shitty or anxious, or, or you can take the middle path and you can say, okay, ideas, like you said, ideas float around, mine come to me at the right time, and I manifest them when I have the time to work on them. And if you work, do your work every day, then the work you're gonna be doing will be in sync with, you know, the, the bigger picture. You know what I mean? And you can let it, you can just let the other stuff go and be happy that it came to visit, you know, you and know, and be happy for it, that it got a life. 
You know what I mean? And know that good things come to your door. So whatever you're working on right now, work on it. Do you know what I mean? And know that it's a wonderful thing and it's going to be great when you get it finished, you know? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, but we're all, you know, in this sort of atmosphere and ideas are whizzing around and, and uh, it's okay. There are so many great, wonderful things to write about or sing about or paint about or anything like that, you know? And many people, I mean, how many paintings of bridges have we seen? Or, you know, there's one, uh, you know, George O'Keefe paints flowers and so does Van Gogh and so does Romare Bearden. You know, lots of people paint pictures of people. And that doesn't mean that there's only one time to do it. If you still want to do it, you can also carry that idea through, you know. Um, okay, so just use it as fuel, fuel, okay? Yep, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks Marta. Um, all right, we've got about five minutes left and we're gonna go to Greg. Oh, hey, Greg. Hi, hey, everybody. I love you guys. I haven't been here in a while and it's so nice to hear all your questions. You're all so brilliant. Um, you kind of answered it actually in the last question, but it's a, I'll ask it anyway, because I think you might have something interesting. I'm in flow right now. Like, like I'm, I'm loving it. I want to ride. I'm heading to my desk. I'm like, oh, I got this, you know, and it's really, really great. But for like a year, <laughs> I have not been in flow. And I've been showing up, but I realize now that I'm in this space, that um, it wasn't about the showing up. It was about that I had a wrong view about what I was doing and mm -hmm. it was confusing me. And so it was an insight into my view that actually shifted my process rather than showing up. And now that I saw how, like I see how close I've been to like flow, you know, all that whole year, and I was just obscured by my own unwillingness to acknowledge something. And so I'm wondering if you have any like practice that, or, or if anyone has any practice that they do that's more about like shifting perspective. If you feel like you're stuck, but you don't really know why, because now that I see what I was thinking incorrectly, it's just like the gates have burst open, but somebody had to point it out to me, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it, it does make sense. And I, I mean, I've come to the point in my career where I think it's all flow. That's nice. Yeah. It's not all easy though, Greg. Yeah. But if I can believe that it's all flow, just I'm always on the river or in the river. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes it's easier, but I'm always in the river. You know what I mean? And for me, that perspective had to shift because for example, I wrote Top Dog Underdog in three days. Oh. Wow. And then what are you supposed to do after that? Walk around and go, I'm a three day writer. <laughs> ha ha fucking ha, right? The spirit goes, huh, <laughs> right, right. And then the next play takes a year and a half to figure out. And then you go, oh no, I must be on the wrong track. Guess what? No, you're just on the track. Okay. You see? So you've been in flow all the time. All this time you've been in flow. It's like that, that, that thing that people say, you know, God, where were you in my time of trouble? I was carrying you. You know, we've, we've heard that story, you know. Um, you've been in flow all this time. Like Dorothy and her shoes, yo. You know what I'm saying? It's in all the, the great stories. You know, um, we're in flow, even when it's difficult. And that faith that you bring to your, your, your writing desk when you show up or your, your easel when you paint or your dance studio when you dance, that faith that I am in flow all the time. The spirit is always talking to you, always. You know, and you just had to get, maybe you had to get to another level. You know, sometimes I realize that, whoa, I just had to like get to another level of, of skill, of craft, you know? That's great. Thank you. That's, it's really, I mean, you rock. 
<laughs> isn't it true though? Isn't it isn't it fucking weird though? You're like shit, man. Well, I guess that's why I'm going crazy is because I I'm now that I'm there, I'm I have seen that. It's like, oh, I was working it out, but it just felt so awful, you know? It's like <laughs> Yeah. It does. It feels awful. It feels like like you're scratching at your skin and it sounds like fingernails on the chalkboard and ah, Calgon take me away and all those things, all those horrible. It feels awful. Yeah. But and I think that's something I like about this group is there's a lot of bravery in showing up when you have those bad periods or not bad periods, but painful periods. And a lot of people here show up like rain or shine and i love that yeah. me too i do too thank you friend you always say it's not about you but i'm just so curious how long did it take you to write father <laughs> oh uh it, it quicker than it took me to write fucking a no way wow that's amazing yes yeah, shit way yeah it's 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 a long strange road brother <laughs> i love that play <laughs> <laughs> thank you greg well it, it, we've got three seconds until 6 p.m. So hey, we're gonna make <laughs> 6 p.m. It's time. George Michael, I knew you were waiting. <gasps> yes. Yeah. Amazing. Ah, oh, welcome back. Yeah, Thank really. For being fun. here. Isn't it fun? This is so much fun. It's, yes. And we'll see you tomorrow. We all dancing. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. All right. As a reminder, please sign up by 3 p.m. Eastern on the Public Theater website or HowlRound, and uh, I'll send you a link between 3 and 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Thank you, Audrey. Thanks, Thank you, SLP. Love we love you. you. Thank you. Bye.